Today, we'll be talking about the WHO Integrated Neglected Tropical Disease Control Program in Timor Leste, a seven-year project implemented by COICA and WHO from 2016 to 2022. Let's take a look at the background of the project, what it is, what it has achieved, and what it have learned from it. Have you ever heard of neglected tropical diseases? If you haven't, it's a collective term for 20 diseases that occur in the tropical regions and mostly affect socioeconomically disadvantaged populations. They severely compromise the health and quality of life of people in developing countries but have been neglected by the international community as a health and development priority. Timor Leste, a small island nation in the South Pacific, also suffers from neglected tropical diseases, most notably soil transmitted intestinal helminthiasis, lymphatic filariasis, and yaws are serious diseases. The government of Timor Leste has been trying to combat these diseases but has been hampered by a lack of funding and little international interest. These diseases can lead to a decrease in labor productivity population, lower academic achievement, and inequality. In particular, it can impair the physical and cognitive development of school-age children, which in turn can hinder their economic independence in adulthood, leading to a vicious cycle of poverty. This is why COICA and WHO decided to undertake this project to help improve the health of the people of Timor-Leste through integrated management of these three diseases. Let's take a closer look at how the project was implemented. The project was divided into three main parts, mass vaccination for lymphatic filariasis, and soil transmitted intestinal helminthiasis, strengthening disease management for YAS patients and COVID-19 response. First, the mass vaccination of lymphatic filariasis and soil transmitted intestinal helminthiasis. Over the course of six years, the project has conducted five mass vaccinations for soil transmitted intestinal helminthiasis and lymphatic filariasis, covering more than 70% of the population in all regions of Timor Leste. Timor Leste has a land area similar to that of Gangwon-do province in Korea and a population of about 1.4 million people, making it possible to provide mass vaccinations to the entire population. We also provided training to village volunteers and health center staff on pre- and post-dose precautions, complication management, and disability prevention and maintenance. Second, we strengthened disease management for YAS patients. Initially, we aimed to conduct mass YAS vaccination for the population in areas with 100% and 75% YAS prevalence respectively, with two cases detected at the start of the program and zero new cases reported from 2019 to the end of the program, the government of Timor-Leste is preparing to be certified as a YAS-free country. We also provided training to 1,650 YAS officers in every district health center in Timor-Leste on YAS case detection, treatment, and surveillance. Finally, we monitored and assessed the status of the COVID-19 surveillance response of health centers across the country and supported them in building their response systems. We updated and disseminated COVID-19 case management guidelines and trained health personnel in the treatment and management of severe cases of COVID-19. We also provided disinfection supplies and IT equipment to 70 health centers and 6 hospitals in 13 provinces, as well as 500 isolation beds and 50,000 diagnostic kits. How did the evaluation team find the project's performance? Identified through literature and interviews, the project was very successful. First of all, they all achieved their initially planned goals. In the case of lymphatic filariasis, the disease has been virtually eliminated, with prevalence rates below 1% in all districts in Timor Leste and in the case of soil transmitted intestinal helminthiasis. The target of maintaining prevalence rates at 10 to 20% was achieved, with the exception of three districts. Yaws has been eliminated with zero reported cases since 2019. Achieving the elimination target and case based surveillance for Yaws has been established in all health centers across the country. For COVID 19 response, we achieved our goal of strengthening COVID 19 response and surveillance capacity in 70 health centers in 13 regions across the country. 
As a result, it is estimated that about 209 million U.S. dollars in economic losses from the three targeted diseases could be prevented for the people of Timor Leste over the next 30 years. So how could COICA and WHO make this difference? The evaluation team's findings point to three main reasons for the success of the project. Timor Leste has a high primary school enrollment rate and a social cultural background of respect for teachers. Therefore, the school-based approach to collective dosing may have helped the program achieve its objectives with the cooperation of teachers. WHO's guidelines for mass vaccination, which were revised in the middle of the project implementation, were actively reflected in the project by making appropriate changes to the existing collective medication method in line with the revised guidelines the implementing organization was able to carry out triple drug collective medication for the first time in the world and efficiently utilize limited resources. Finally, the project adopted the bottom-up system, whereby health personnel from participating local governments developed the project plan taking into account local conditions. This allowed them to consider transportation and local resources when procuring drugs and test kits. They were also able to efficiently deploy and utilize limited resources such as human resources, budget, and drugs to increase the effectiveness of the project's intervention. So how can COICA and WHO make a better difference in the future? The evaluation team identified two areas for improvement. At the time of the project, local recipient organizations, especially the Ministry of Health, faced difficulties in coordinating and collaborating with various stakeholders due to the lack of strong leadership and management systems. In particular, they were unable to independently plan, implement, and report on neglected tropical disease programs. Therefore, it was suggested that it is necessary to check the recipient organization's project execution capabilities, leadership, internal and external communication and cooperation systems, etc., and prepare strategies for the deficiencies in advance and reflect them in the project. Unfortunately, to date, the Timor Leste government's funding for neglected tropical disease management has not been secured, and the follow-up project is being implemented under the leadership of WHO. The evaluation team recommended that continued external support would be needed to keep the three diseases under control and to maintain the project's performance. If the Timor's government is unable to secure financial resources, ultimately, they added that a mechanism is needed to ensure that financial contributions from recipient countries are realized. In addition, as the country is on the verge of being certified as a yes free country, it is necessary to establish a post yes strategy. Through this evaluation, we learned about the WHO Integrated Neglected Tropical Disease Control Program and Timor Leste project. In your opinion, what further efforts are needed to improve this project? Please share your thoughts in the comments so that COICA can contribute to the sustainable development of the health sector in Timor Leste. This end of project evaluation was conducted by an external evaluation agency and reviewed by COICA's Independent Committee for Evaluation Quality Assessment Panel for Evaluation Quality.